The lions are coming up over this ridge. We don't know exactly where they are. We've had to come around the way. And now the wildebeest have started running. We thought they were having a panic attack, but they're not. They're just sort of doing a little migration. And just only, only half of them, there are huge numbers all sides of us, and these cats are in the grass over here. They left that kill completely uneaten, but for one extremely sensitive part. It was a bull, and you can put two and two together from that. They left him there. You got the lines? No. And we wanted to follow them up over the top, but it was too rocky, and so we had to come around. And it's they're, they're in here somewhere. We're just wondering exactly where. Oh, watch out, here they come. They're right next to us. Right next to us there, they've just nailed one. Just to the left, left, left. They're right there. They've just smashed one. They came straight out of the grass behind us. I cannot believe we missed that. Right here. Straight out of the grass. <laughs> that happened in less than a second. I, I don't, I really cannot understand how that happened. I was looking exactly in that area. She's going to hunt again, Ferg. Watch her. I'm just going to swing right hand down for you. Let's go to Facebook. How's that, Ferg? Not so, not so good. Just duck your head down. Everybody, we're on our second hunt here. In fact, the third. We've just watched another wildebeest go down, and now that lioness is on the hunt. We're not sure exactly where these wildebeest are going. They weren't panicked by the lions, but now they are. And that group there doesn't have any idea that there's a lion after her, after them. Ferg, if you want me to move, I can. Keep it here for now. Should we stay here for now? We're going to stay here. Another lioness also having a go now, closer by. Ferg, have you seen this one next to us? Ferg is on camera, by the way, everybody. There's the other lioness here, and she's waiting for this herd. There she goes, and she's hoping the herd is going to head this way. They have not picked up on these lions yet, the, herd, the wildebeest at the back. This is an absolutely crazy sighting. Thank you to all of you for your comments and questions. I think we're going to sit here for now. I think we might have to move around though, Ferg. What do you think? Okay, there we go. I'm going to move quickly now. I've got eyes on the lioness. There are a lot of rocks here. If I see her run, I will stop the car. But I just think that the grass is so long here that we could easily miss it. Just a little bit up to that termite mound. I think we'll stop over there. We don't want to interfere. There she is. She's just over my right shoulder there, making her way towards the herd. We'll stop at this termite mound. The wind is now blowing. This is entirely in the lion's favor. There's still light. Can you see her, folks? She's just straight over my shoulder. Well done. Those wildebeest standing up, hoping to see what the threats are. Now, there are a whole lot sort of angling towards this way. I'm not going to move from here. The wind has come up, the storm has come up. These lionesses are killing for the sake of killing. They do have not been eating. They did not eat the other one that they killed. They've just killed another one behind us. There she is, well spotted. <laughs> straight towards them. Look how perfectly colour she is. She's moving now on smell and on sound. She cannot see, but she knows she's close. She can hear their movements. She's using the wind. They will have absolutely no idea that that's where she is. Just watch carefully, every so often, just a little flash of tawny fur through the grass. Oh, this is terrifying for a wildebeest. Oh, Maritza, you say it's like they're on a hunting frenzy. That's exactly what's going on. Can you still see her? Mm. I can't see her either. She's in there somewhere, everybody. Somewhere in there, and she's about to make her move. 
her second move of the day. I don't know if this is the same lioness. She must be so close now. It can't be long before a little one walks past that she singles out as a target. And we might only see, the only thing we might see is the wildebeest suddenly scattering. I'm trying to spot the other one. Don't know where the other one's gone. What we don't want to do here, everyone, is move, start the engine and spook them. There, what have you spotted, wildebeest? Keeping an eye out both, all sides of us now. Where is she? In that swaying red oat grass, perfectly camouflaged. She is the absolutely perfect design for this landscape. And now the wildebeest have calmed. They're making their soft canoeing sounds. But somewhere in those swaying culms, death lurks. We might, like I say, only see them suddenly panic and run. Why they decide to start hunting now, I don't know. Look at the light changing. The sun is just setting behind us. It's turned the golden colors. And somewhere in there, in that beautiful mass of grass, lies Africa's most effective migration killer. I'm just, every so often I'm looking up and just looking around to see if the others aren't coming close by. And Joseph, who's our scar, you got it? No, your head. My head, sorry. I'm just moving. Joseph is saying that there is one to the left of us. Okay. She's going. There she goes. Oh, well done. That's number three. Fergus. Brilliant work there, everyone. Cameramen seldom get the kudos they deserve. Absolutely brilliant patience not to move the camera from there. That is a year and seven months old, everybody, on its second migration. Oh, he's putting up a good fight. Come on, fella. But those enormous lion canines are in between the windpipe now and the throat and I don't think there's any chance that that thing is going to escape. She is so strong. They're probably about equally matched in weight at the moment, but in terms of strength there really is no competition whatsoever. Now look at the rest of them behind there. They're not panicked, they're just now migrating slowly. They're just having a run. Now, for I hate to do this to you, but just off to our left, there's another lioness stalking. I'm going to move slightly. Oh, there she goes. She's about to run. Can you see her there, folk? Okay, I'm going to stop here. Sorry about that. She's going to run. That's a You got her. Just to the... You got her. She's, there's a little stick to the right, to the right, folk. To the right. Quite a long way to the right, where those wildebeest are there. She's just behind that stick. Okay. Somewhere there. Just to the left, sorry, of the stick, actually. Yeah, somewhere in there she disappeared. Can you believe it? This is our third hunt in broad daylight. And this grass is just so perfect for them. You know, we come through an area like this, we think, wow, that's beautiful. Yes, it is beautiful, but it is also extremely treacherous if you cannot see what's in it. Now, I want you to imagine as you watch this that you are, a, are one of our ancient human ancestors walking through this grass and how much more easily you would have seen the lions being on upright on two feet as opposed to on all fours like these animals here. Turtle, I think your question is, why do, are they killing just for fun or why do they kill for fun? I think it's the same reason that a cat drag or will chase a ball of wool. Because they can, it's what they do. And that strong instinct to hunt and kill, of course, comes from the need to eat. But at the same time, when there is so much to eat, the instinct to catch and kill doesn't disappear. They do not 
are not blessed of self-control like we are. You see anything there, Fergus? No, I can't either. She's there. We saw her go in there. She must be now about to pounce. I'm just going to take my binoculars out and have a look-see. Yeah, James, you say it's a marvel to watch these lions. It's an absolutely astonishing thing to see. And it is so unusual for us because we're not used to following lions like this on the migration. I had no idea that this is how they behaved until I got here. I can't see any flashes of tawny amongst the grass there. Her tail will be flat down. She'll be approaching slowly. And the important thing is to keep a lookout everywhere. Because it's quite possible that the lioness we just saw kill it's quite possible she's killed that wildebeest and left it and is now stalking again. Ferg, I'm going to suggest we move slightly forward. You want to back up slightly. We'll just watch to see if they run. And if they run, then we know they are moving away from her, which the others were not. The other lioness who killed is just over there to the right-hand side. Um, somewhere in that grass, I'm not going to try and find her because we could easily run her over. It's very thick, it's very rocky in here. I'm not worried about running this lioness over because she's sufficiently far enough away from us. I don't see her anywhere. Yeah, in front of us there's another one. I think no, that's the one who was killed. That's the one we saw kill. Five lionesses so far that we've seen in this pride. At least she's still on her kill there. Whether she'll actually make use of it or not, I don't know. Let's leave her there. Wondering what Gnu's taste like, which is you got it. No, she's right, she's right there. Benny, I'll get back to you. Ferg down, yeah, yeah. You got her then. There she is, well spotted. She's not far now. Benny, you want to know what Gnu tastes like? I don't know. I don't think I've, I may have eaten it. Oh, here she goes. Now oh, they have no idea. Now oh, they have absolutely no idea. Just a straggler at the back there, I think is going to cop it. It's limping. That one back at the back is limping. It's in big trouble. She's picked it up exactly like she picked up the other one, if it was her. Look at them coming together there. I don't know if she's noticed it's limping or not. She's now right in between it and the second last wildebeest. There she's going for the other, another one, to the right. Oh. oh my goodness. That's number three. <laughs> this is absolutely astonishing stuff. Can you believe the luck of that limping one? She didn't see the limping one. And she grabbed the youngster in front. And just no chance. You'll never get out of those canines. The claws are about half the length of you of an adult male finger, and obviously as sharp as a knife. And again, that is a yearling. And I can tell that from the horns into the second migration, made it through the most difficult time of life, and are plucked from existence by a greedy and murderous pride of lions. And I know that sounds very nasty, but really, it is difficult to watch this without feeling like that. There is a huge storm now blowing in. All right, let's go a bit closer to that one, I think. I've never seen anything like this at all. I've never come close to seeing anything like this. 
I'm sitting next to a lion researcher who's been <laughs> watching lions for an excess of 20 years now. She's never seen anything like this before. And the reason I'm sitting up like this is, uh, well, it's because it's very rocky through here and we just don't want to drive onto something and make a big noise or over something, perhaps another lioness. There's still two lionesses unaccounted for. I don't know where they are. They could easily be s stalking in amongst that lot. I think we might have to shut this down fairly soon, everybody, and put down the covers because there is a big storm coming in. Now we've got a question from the name, I'm afraid I missed it. You're wondering if they'll come back and kill what they leave. Nicole, often you know they won't. They'll just kill, they'll eat a few smackerels, and then they'll leave it for the vultures. There we go. Before the sun's even set, we've had one, two, three, four kills. <laughs> All right, everybody, this is where I find it very difficult to keep watching because these animals do not die quickly. We're going to have to pack up for the storm, I think. Thank you for joining us. We'll keep you posted if anything else happens.